Hi there guys, welcome back to another edition of Catching Garrick from the Shore. Now, this is part two of a three-part series, um, excluding the species video. So we're now going to be talking about targeting these magnificent fish on lures. Now as you can see in the pictures and everything and what I've got laid out in front of me, there are a lot of different ways of actually targeting them and a lot of different lures that you can use. So I think first we're going to do the tackle that I'd recommend and then we're going to cut across to uh, actually going through the lures themselves. The one thing with any lure fishing, the longer your lure is in the water, the more chance you are of catching a fish. That just, it's, that makes sense. So now, as opposed to the sliding where we weren't casting as far as we could, this, you need a setup that's gonna be able to put, a, put your lures at least a good fair distance, um, and it allows it, gives it more time in the water. So for that, there's nothing that can really beat the Saltis power spin. It is, a machine of a rod. There's a 12 foot six and an 11 foot six. Uh, for this, for methods that I'm gonna mention right, you can use both, but the 11 six is a little bit more usable in terms of when you're actually doing things like the bucktails and the paddle tails, where you're actually gonna be flicking them with your wrist, you are gonna want something slightly shorter, just it doesn't fatigue you as much. If you want ultimate, ultimate distance and just an absolute brute of a stick, the 12 foot six will then be your option. But yeah, guys, very, very nice construction. They are light in the hand. Um, they got the longer handles. A lot of guys ask why they get the long handles. Any rod that's designed for a repetitive casting and a lot of casting is gonna have a nice long handle if you're using a grinder because it's that leverage to throw. Now, yes, you can cast like that the other way around and it does, it does work, but for, lot, for lots and lots of repetitive casting, this longer lever works an absolute charm. You've got your X45 or your, your HVF graphite at least, that's um, on all this, so high volume fiber graphite. And we've discussed this right in the past. Everyone knows it's brilliant. Get to any quality tackle store is gonna have this in. So go down to your nearest store and have a feel of the rod if you, if you wanna have a go at that. Now, onto that rod, we're gonna put this little beastie here. Now this is the BG Mag Seal 4500. Um, beautifully smooth as we mentioned in many videos before up from the normal bg you've got the thickened main shaft you've got a 360 degree thread on that so the drags are actually the same but because this tightens flat and goes down like that as opposed to the 180 so either side this drag feels a lot stronger actually it, it's it's just nice micro clicks you can adjust your drag just so um, it's got a nice big handle the reason we go for this over the 4000 is it's going to hold a little bit more line, so if you do hook something like a bigger kingy or if you want to have a multi-purpose uh, setup for spinning, the 4500 is going to be a little bit, little bit of a better setup, especially on the 11.6. It feels a little bit small with a 4, but you can get away with it. Personal preference, 4500. Now, that guy, nice big handle, you're not going to slip off when you, if you are waving a little bit. Also, the mag seal then is going to help, you're not going to get water intruded into the gearbox. So that's that guy there. Now, onto him, you obviously have to put some line. Nylon is not gonna cut it, not for distance. Um, unfortunately, we've moved a long way from nylon into braid, and it's just a lot better to go for the braid do, for, for putting braid on. For that, Dawa J braid, this 20 pound breaks a lot above that. What they say on the Dawa J braid, as opposed to what it actually breaks at, you can generally add about 10 pounds, especially on the lighter stuff. This 20 pound is more than strong enough and more than thin enough to throw great distances and you can pull very many things off very many other things. You can actually pull the barnacles off rocks if you really wanted to. As this stuff is, is brilliant, brilliant stuff. Now, 300 meters is not gonna fill that of the 20 pound. So you are gonna need a bit of backing. For that, we use the Daiwa four strand, um, the J-Bed four strand. And there, the 30 pound is gonna be, it's gonna fill it up nice and quickly. You're only gonna use about, say, 150 meters of that. So that's that onto there. And then obviously we need a leader because you can't have your luminescent braid sitting right in the front and that attached to your lures themselves. So we've got the braid from uh, Sunline or the Siglon that's the new FC100 fluorocarbon. It's got a little bit of stretch in it. So unlike other fluorocarbons and the older one that was very, very stiff, this guy's actually got a bit of limpness to him. 
but not as soft as something that's going to get cut like the copolymers and things like that. This stuff is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It, actually, it's, it's taken the world by storm, especially the bass guys and the uh, guys that fish for striped bass in America are raving about this. So this is now in, it's a saltwater version. That, we're putting about a 50 pound, it's depending on you, I'd like the 50, it gives you a little bit more abrasion resistance because the Garrick does have a bit of a rough um, set of teeth, you can call it that. This is going to be able to sit on there and wear through or wear along like that and it's not going to wear through. So, fluoro onto there. If you did, you could use Maxima if you wanted to save a few bucks, but that's our, my recommendation. So guys, that's the, the actual hardware of targeting these fish. Now we're going to go into looking at the little lures and what to do and how to fish them. Okay, let's cut to that. First off, paddle tails. Now, paddle tails, jerk minnows, soft plastics in general. You're going to be using your stock standard jig heads. Now, these guys are the paddle pro ones from the Kingfisher range. They are brilliant hooks on there, nice and sharp, strong as all hell. Uh, the weight is going to depend on where you're fishing and what you're throwing, and the hook size depends on the size of the actual manure you're using. So, we've got the Mimic paddle tails, beautifully soft. I mean, they, they're actually so much fun to play with. Um, they are designed with that slot in the bottom, but they're not all the way through like a normal bass fluke. So, if you are gonna rig them weedless with a bass hook, like your um, Big Mouth from, from Mustard, you can do that. Otherwise, on a paddle tail, you still have enough meat there that it's not gonna, the hook's not gonna wander around and then just tear through. The nice thing about him, the softer pedal tail and the, or the nice big pedal and the softer action means when you can rip him through the water, he gives a very nice vibration, but it's not, you, you don't lose momentum when, you, when you're giving him a bit of a jerky action that you can actually, you can actually kick, if that makes sense. It's, they come in a lot of lovely colors. That is my personal preference. That little greeny color on the bottom with the see through, it's just so natural. The nice thing about these, you can fish them for Cobb and for Garrick. So the guys going down to Port St. John's, they're very different methods of fishing paddle tails to Garrick, um, as opposed to Cobb, which we'll cover in a second. Um, but then we've also got, if you want to go ultra realistic, we've got the Pro Rex. It's a slightly harder rubber, um, so it holds its shape very nicely, and a slightly smaller tail, it's actually called a duck, duck foot tail. He gives out a different vibration. So if you're looking for something that's different to what everyone else is throwing, the Pro Rex is the way to go. Also, a lot of different colors. That's the six inch version. Uh, does go down all the way to, I believe, a little three inch but you're not gonna use that. The six inch is the one you wanna go for. And in this, we do a 4.9 and a 5.9 inch, obviously in all the colors. So the 4.9 is the one I'm probably gonna be throwing because it's slightly more compact. You can get it a further distance. So if you need to throw far, go for the smaller one. If you need to throw close, you go for the bigger one. So in terms of actually fishing these paddle tails, you're either gonna tie a loop knot or you're gonna use a clip onto the actual paddle tail because you want that movement onto the jig head. But you don't, for a cob, you throw, you let it go right to the bottom, and then you're gonna wind it very, very slowly. You wanna kick it just along the bottom. The cob is lazy. He wants it to come past his nose, then he's gonna grab it. For the Garrick, you need to do the same action with your bucktails as you're gonna do for these. You're gonna cast it, let it sink to the bottom, whoop, wind up, whoop, wind up, whoop, wind up. That's how you fish it. That is the most effective way of fishing it. Look, there are no rules. You can, you'll catch them just winding it slowly on the bottom. You'll catch it probably throwing and winding it along the surface. But that's what I've found is the most effective way of catching them. So obviously with that, we're also talking about the bucktails, which is those guys there, which is basically a painted lead head with bucktail out the back. Now they also come, the mustard ones are, the hooks that I put on these things are just phenomenal. Because the biggest problem with bucktails is they often put cheap hooks on. You hook a good fish and the hook just goes meh, which is not what you want. These guys aren't gonna do that, nice big eyes. They've got two tie-in points, so you can actually fish them differently. But the top one is the one that you get the most seesawing action. The front one, if you wanna fish it quickly with a tip down for more species like kingfish and things like that. Color, not that important. Black gives you a beautiful silhouette in low light and your brighter colors work better in the day. But it's really more of the action than it is the color, if that makes sense. One and a half ounce will do you well. Up to, on this rod, you can go up to a four ounce if you wanted to, but probably four long periods of casting, you're gonna to wanna to look at something more in the range of say, two ounces to three ounces thereabouts. So that's what we got covered there. So we've done the pedal tails, we've done the buck tails. Now we're gonna move on to the spoons. There are two ones that we do that are gonna be very effective for this. The S-flat comes in a five ounce and a two and a half ounce. 
Um, any good shop's gonna stock these. They, we wholesale them all around the, all around the globe. But uh, in terms of globe, I'm meaning South Africa. Now, the five ounce is gonna be for the guy that's gonna wanna throw it on his setup that he's using to throw baits. So this will throw on this rod, but you're gonna tire yourself out quite quickly throwing a five ounce all the time. The one I prefer is this little guy here. Now it's the, the S Chrome Large. It's got a nice big, big profile, but it's a very thin spoon. So it's not a lot of weight and it flies through the air very nicely. E all these guys are designed, they flutter as they go. So it's not a fast winding spoon. This guy, you're gonna cast, count it five, for example, and then just wind it and you'll feel it. It actually vibrates like that on the rod. Then you're gonna cast, count to 10 and wind like that. So now you're gonna be fishing all the different levels as you go. But that's guys, those are the two. You're looking at both nice big size spoons. They're presenting a large profile because the Garrick are after either mullet or shad or things like that. It's not, they're not after little fish like this. You're looking at bigger, bigger profiles. Then we're gonna go on to surface plugs. Now, there are a lot of traditional plugs like this pencil popper from Strike Pro that will work, but what we generally use are chisel nose and needle nose plugs. Now, you're gonna be asking, when do I use a chisel and when do I use a needle? For that answer, you've got to first subscribe down below and like this, like this video and then I'll tell you. So I'll wait for you. Okay, now that you've done that, we're gonna use a needle nose mainly in calmer conditions or if we need to throw further. Because it's got a smaller profile at the back, if you look at those two, it's got a smaller profile, it travels through the air a lot quicker and it's a lot more aerodynamic when you're actually throwing it. So that's when you're gonna use a needle nose for distance and for calm water because in the calm, this guy snakes along, he makes enough disturbance, but he doesn't overwhelm the fish, if that makes sense. So that's, that guy works very, very well for that. Color, once again, not the most important thing you need to focus on. Getting it into the right spot and fishing it correctly. This guy is a surface lure. I've seen a lot of guys casting these, letting them sink and winding them along the bottom. That's, this is designed to go on the surface. So cast that, as it hits the water, start winding quickly, get it onto the surface and then wind as slowly as you can to still keep it on the surface snaking along. The opposition to that, chisel nose, doesn't throw as well. Obviously, if you get a heavier, heavier one, it is gonna throw better as long as it's balanced to your setup. But he sits along the surface and he smacks the surface a little bit better than the chisel nose, I mean, than the needle nose. So he makes a lot more noise. So this is gonna be when you've got a lot more churning water, when you've got white water in there and waves rolling, that's when this guy comes into his own. He's gonna sit, he snakes along still, but as soon as he gets bumped, he smacks the surface. So it makes a lot of noise and gets attraction coming in. So those are those two guys. Look, there are a lot of colors. There are a lot of guys that will claim you only catch on pink, you only catch on yellow, you only catch on the color of Squidward's tentacle. There are a lot of different things behind there, but white is an all out favorite. Um, and then any sort of variation on that. So if it's white, a little bit of pink, white, a little bit of red, I mean, to that extent. So those are the surface lures that we've covered. Last but not least, we're gonna be talking about the clips. Now, there are a whole lot of different clips that are done. You get these stainless steel guys that are sort of bent round. You'll be able to see in the picture a little bit better. Personal preference, I like to tie on to a, to a lure, and I think I've mentioned this many times. But if I was to use a clip, which I do every now and again, mustard fast hatch. You cannot beat this clip. For ease of use, for the amount of freedom it gives the lure with that very, very round big eye in the front, it just clips on, clips off. It's honestly, I mean, Pop it onto there, just like that. You, you, you don't get easier than that. Yeah, so you just twist it, twist it on like that. In. Easy. So guys, onto that beautiful fast touch that we use there for simplicity, we're gonna use a swivel. Now, use the best swivel you can. There are too many guys that use cheap swivels that twist up the line and all sorts that just don't function. Power swivel is the way you want to go. Every good shop stocks these, so make sure you go down and get a packet of these. Get a few different sizes, but it's number four. They are hellishly strong for their size. So he's going to be what we use. We tie our braid to that, to the power swivel. A section of leader, now remember that leader is staying outside your guide, so you don't want to have a leader longer than you're comfortable casting. And then you're going to tie that onto the fast attach that you clip onto your lures. So it makes a very efficient way of, of fishing that once you cut your leader back from changing lures or changing clips or things like that, you don't have to retie an FG or, or a, a PR or anything on the beach. 
you can just tie the Palomar knot if you need to change the swivel. Otherwise, you're just tying a figure of eight onto that swivel. It is very, very easy, keeps everything nice and simple. And when the fish are running, you don't have to constantly now worry about, oh, I can't remember how Mike did that FG or how I need to twist this or hold it with that finger or that thumb. It is easy, easy, easy. So, guys, that is Garrick fishing in a nutshell. It's a lot to take in. Focus on which aspect you want to do and go out and catch a Garrick. <laughs>